Hi, I'm the developer of Leadworks Game Engine, and today I'm here to talk to you about something new I'm working on called Ultra App Kit. Now, this is a modern, close to the metal desktop application development framework. Let me tell you the story about how this came to be. So, a few years ago, I created a Kickstarter campaign to add Linux support to Leadworks Game Engine. The campaign blew through its $20,000 goal within a couple of days and ultimately reached $42,000 by the end of the campaign. Now, for this software, I used the native user interface for each platform. That means Win32 for Windows, Cocoa for Macs, and Linux doesn't actually have a native user interface, but GTK is the kind of the unofficial one for, for Linux. Now, that software went on to become a success with over a million dollars in sales across all stores it's sold in, uh, more than 30,000 customers, including some big names like NASA, Northrop Grumman, and Lockheed Martin and others. Uh, VR support was added, which is great fun. I love VR, I love working with it. And uh, based on the success of this, I have a new game engine that's in development. It's actually been in development for a couple of years, but don't worry, you'll hear all about it later. So I made a good piece of software, but I want my next application to be absolutely great. I want everything to be perfect. And that starts with the user interface. Now, with the native approach, I discovered some problems along the way. First of all, there's a very limited selection of widgets. For example, Win32 doesn't actually have a draggable tree view display. So you end up having to create your own custom items, and you spend a lot of time uh, trying to hide the inconsistencies between the custom elements and the native elements. And as a result of that, there's just not a lot of room for new innovation. If I implement some kind of new widget, into the interface, I have to do it three times in order to get it to look right on Mac, Linux, and Windows. Uh, additionally, GTK uh, isn't that great for a user interface. Um, the design of it, uh, there's a lot of asynchronous stuff in there, and that caused a lot of bugs on Linux that I had to spend a lot of time on that I would have been rather spent that time improving the program. And then also, uh, Windows has just gotten brighter and brighter over the years. You know, Windows, it used to, the interface used to be gray. And every new release, they just make it whiter and whiter and whiter to where it's just blinding. Now, in games, we often work with environments that are pretty dark or somewhere in the middle. And so when you have this area of high contrast, it just makes it really hard to look at, especially, you know, if you're, if you're working with this for hours and hours. And finally, one reaction I found with a lot of people when I showed them the program in, in person, their initial reaction was, oh, it looks old because it's got you know, the, the native user interface. And that's kind of frustrating because it's like you, you know, put all this effort into making things look supposedly the right way, and then the user automatically assumes that it's obsolete because we're so accustomed to seeing uh, kind of custom user interfaces. So that caused me to go back and look at uh, this whole issue again to see if there's a better way. So I surveyed all the popular UI libraries out there and I found they actually really fell into three different categories. First are the native UI abstraction layers such as Qt, WX widgets, and Max GUI. And this was my approach that I used for the Leadworks editor. Second are game user interfaces such as Noesis, IMGUI, and Gwen, which is used in Gary's mod. And then finally, what something that's uh, gained in popularity in recent years are these web-based interfaces such as Electron, and I believe Avalonian UI falls into this category. The issues with game user interfaces is that mostly it's they're designed for real-time rendering, and as a result of that, the interface is just never going to be as snappy as an event-driven system. They often require initialization of a 3D viewport, and Vulkan, can, Vulkan runs really fast, but it can take a few seconds to initialize. And if we're just making a small program that we want to pop up immediately, there's no reason to, to, to do that. Uh, they're usually designed for a single window, lacking pop-up elements that aren't clipped by the, by the uh, parent window, such as menus, drop-down boxes, and tooltips. And there's a lot of inconsistency between system and UI font rendering with kerning, the fonts used, the anti-aliasing, and the general appearance of the text. I mean, 
when you're using an application that's rendering the interface into an OpenGL window or something, you can always tell that something something looks off. Now, these web you, uh, these the web approach basically these work by packaging the Chromium web browser engine into the application and then making the the user interface with HTML. And the problem with that is they're just not going to be as responsive to mouse and resize events, and they're just always going to feel less snappy. You're going to have increased application size and memory usage. You're going to, these are usually, again, they're usually designed for a single window lacking pop-up elements. And, you know, it's great if you're developing something that you want to run in a browser and on the desktop, such as Discord. That's a great example of this technology. But I'm not making a web app. So... You know why would I accept the all the downsides of this these compromises when the upside, you know, which is running in a web browser, does not that's just not relevant to me. Let me show you an example of what I mean. Uh, this is Visual Studio Code, which is uh, built with the Electron interface, and I'll show you. You know, when you resize it, this is what it does. And this honestly, this reminds me of Windows before. It was hardware accelerated when everything used to be drawn on the CPU. Uh, this is exactly what it was like. And then when hardware acceleration became a thing with the GPU on Windows, then all of a sudden the interface uh, just got so much snappier. And I'll also show you uh, the menus here. Looks okay, right? Well, let's make the window smaller. And you can see the, the menus getting cut off. And it's just kind of cheesy. I mean, it just reminds you that, okay, this isn't, this is designed to run in a web browser. So with all of this, there's a lot of different approaches you can take, and I think it's a good idea to step back and say, you know, what is our goal here? What is it that we want? And I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. The best possible experience for a desktop application on the PC. Anything that pulls us in a direction other than this is not something that I want to deal with. I care about a desktop application, period. What does that mean? Let's break that down. We want consistency and stability of the native UI, like fonts, kerning, subpixel anti-alias settings, we want all of that to match what we see across the user interface. We want very fast response times to mouse and resize events. We want the application to start fast. Everything else aside, we prefer minimal application size, minimal memory usage, and minimal hardware requirements. We can raise those if we need to, but we won't, don't want to unless there's a good reason for it. We want pop-up elements that aren't clipped by the parent window so we can fit the maximum amount of information uh, that, the, that the user can see at once. And finally, we want an extensible widget system with customizable appearance and behavior. We don't want to be limited by what the native UI offers, which you run out of, you run out of options pretty quick with that. These things are not considerations in my design. Uh, web apps are not a consideration. This interface is not made for games. This interface is not made for mobile. If you have something that works with those things and that's a priority for you, that's great. But I'm building a desktop application for a computer with a mouse and keyboard interface, period. And this is the design I came up with. Now, first we have the window class. And this is completely separate code on each operating system. On Windows, it's using Win32. On Mac, it's using Cocoa. And on Linux, it's using the X windowing system. X window system, by the way, is awesome. I had absolutely no problems with it. I don't, I don't know why it gets such a bad rap. All right, so these, this window, it feeds events into our central code here. This is the real brain of the system. And this handles the user interface logic and the widget construction. Now, widgets are made up of blocks, and a block can be a rectangle, it can be a block of text within a defined area, or it can be an image. And these blocks are then just are then sent to the rendering system. And the rendering system, again, we have this layer of abstraction, 
it does the exact same thing with three different APIs. On Windows, it uses GDI+. Plus. On Mac, it uses Quartz. And on Linux, it uses something called XRender. Now, what you'll notice is the inputs and the outputs of this system are exactly the same thing that Win32 and the Coco interfaces work with. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm ripping out the center of that system and I'm replacing it with something new that's updated for the 2020s that's more extensible and easier to work with. And this is what it looks like. Um, I love the dark theme. It's exactly the way I want it to look. Uh, the light theme still needs a little bit, bit of work, but there's still plenty of time to get it perfect uh, before the end, before the, before the release. Um, we've got a multi-select draggable tree view where you can insert uh, nodes in between other nodes. We've got, you know, notice the drop-down boxes and the menus um, up here outside the area of the parent window. The whole thing just looks fantastic. And this is what my, this is what I want my new application to look like. All right, now this is the current state of development. Here's our uh, tree view over here, which I'm very happy with. I can click on this and I can drag this and make it a child of subnode 5, but I can also insert it anywhere I want here. Let's put it between 3 and 4. There we go. Now, if I drag it down here, I can place it right after subnode 5 if I want, or I can go down just a hair and uh, put it right back in its original position. I can filter this just by typing up here. I can find exactly what I want. I love it. Here's the checkbox, radio button, toggle button. Got a file requester here. And uh, here's the menus. Watch how fast this resizes. It's just instantaneous. It's faster than I can even see. Now compare this to Visual Studio Code. And you can see just how slow that is. It's kind of a detail, but you know, when we're starting out, I can program this any way I want. So let's just do it right. Let's make it perfect. We have a lot of supported widgets right out of the box, including a label, a progress bar, single line text field, a multi-line text area, menu system, combo box, which is like a drop-down box, a list box, a panel that comes with several styles, buttons with, that come as check boxes, toggle buttons, radio buttons, and good old push buttons, a slider that comes in three flavors, scroll bar, track bar, and stepper styles, and the draggable multi-select tree view, which is about a thousand lines of C++ code. Plus, you can create your own. I know you're going to want to create new widgets, and you can create anything you can imagine with this system. And this is how the code looks like. All right, so first... This is, uh, we grab all the displays on the computer. These are the monitors the computer is using. And then we create a window on the primary display. Then we create a user interface on the window. Then we create a background panel. And we'll create a button right in the middle of that panel. And then we go down here, we wait for an event, and then we evaluate that event. That's one way you can do it. And then this is a little bit fancier. In this case, we're going to listen for a specific event and we're going to bind a function that is automatically executed when that event occurs. So this is a little bit more advanced, and if you have a bigger program, then you're going to want to do it this way because then you can break up all your functionality into lots of different code files. Let's talk a little bit about the API design. I use C++ shared pointers everywhere, and these are so wonderful. It's basically all the advantages of garbage collection without the overhead. We've got an extensible widget system, so you can create new widgets. Anything you can dream of, you can create, and it's, it's going to look great. Uh, I know how important documentation is to you guys, so we're going to have extensive documentation with examples for every command. I will not let you down on this. And then finally, this API, even though it's written in C++, we can interface this with C Sharp and the Lua programming languages. And I've got the, the hard parts of that are worked out. Okay, so the user interface has these great features. First of all, it's resolution independent, and I mean 
completely resolution independent for any DPI. We can do 1080p, 4K, 8K, 16K. We can do resolutions that aren't even invented yet because it just doesn't care. You can load SVG vector images for icons, which is what I recommend doing because it's resolution independent. You can filter and sort widget items by name. You can set widget uh, and item images. You can change the mouse cursor. And we have color, uh, custom color schemes stored in JSON files, so they're real easy to edit. This isn't just a user interface library. We've got We've got commands for loading and saving files. We've got a file system watcher, which that sits there on the hard drive and watches a folder. And when the user saves a file or something, it, you get an event, so you can make your application automatically reload images or other things. We've got uh, commands for memory allocation and management. Again, all using shared pointers, so it's really hard to make a mistake with it. We've got image loading, saving, processing. Uh, package uh, package loading for compressed and encrypted archives. We've got a plug-in system, so if there's, you know, we support about, I don't know, 10 or 20 different image formats already, but if there's a new image format that you want, you can add it with the plug-in system. We've got commands for thread management, string manipulation, and message boxes, and a file and folder requester. Lots of stuff, but I needed all of this for my application, and if you want, you can use it too. So this campaign is asking for a modest amount, and this is just to get the Windows version out with C++ support. And we have three stretch goals. They don't have to be in this order. You know, I'm just gonna listen to what the backers say. But the three, stre the three stretch goals are, one is for C-sharp and Lua programming support. Another is for Mac and Linux support. If you want, we can get that out immediately. And then finally, I know if you give people a great user interface, then the next thing they're going to ask for is a visual designer for it. And if that's something that you guys need, then we can certainly make that happen as well. So what I really learned from the process of doing this research is, you know, the question, what is the best user interface library? The answer is, it really depends on what you're creating. I'm creating a desktop application to run on a computer with a mouse and keyboard interface. I'm not creating a web app. I'm not creating something that runs on mobile. I'm not creating you know, a, a touchscreen interface to order Big Macs at McDonald's. This is just for a desktop application. And I feel like that's an area that has been neglected in recent years. Everybody's trying to shoehorn the PC into looking like a cell phone or something that it's not. And you know, the fact is, you know, most of the creative work in the world is still done on the PC, and I expect that will be the case for a very long time. So, you know, I didn't want to write this user interface from the, from the beginning. I wanted to use something else. But I really found that there was nothing out there that was suitable for my purposes. And if you're developing a desktop application, then I think this is going to be a great solution for you. So if you like what I'm doing, you can get the final product by backing this campaign. And please tell everyone on the internet and spread the word. Thank you for your support.